Now I frequent these thrift stores quite often and ran across a little stainless steel Cabela's coffee percolator coffee pot. So I thought, well, I'll bring it out and give it a whirl and make me some coffee with. Now, I wanted to uh, talk to you about kit. And, you know, we all put our kits together. Everybody does something a little different. Sometimes we have the same things from one guy to the next, you know. I mean, most people carry a fair CM rod, uh, you know, some type of knife. That's pretty much a given. Uh, you know, containers, that type of stuff. You know, I see a lot of hype about, you know, this container or that container. And that's all fine and dandy, you know. I mean, you, you can like whatever you like, but, you know, I, I prefer uh, stainless steel. Now, I, I picked up a stainless steel, what they call a mucket or a corn boiler. They're not really, truly, period, back during, you know, they might have come into existence right around the Civil War, somewhere around in there. Uh, my other mucket or corn boiler is actually a tin one. And it's a tin solder solder joint, and I I like it. I've used it for years. I've had it for reenacting. I've done trekking with it. Um, you know, for a one end all be all just basic pot works great. You know, you, you don't need a cup per se if you've got that. I mean, it's nice to have another vessel to drink out of. But <coughs> excuse me. But I really like a mucket as far as, especially like on a, you know, a short one or two day trek. But you're kind of limited, you know, you're, you're going to fry or do whatever on the fire, on a, on a slab or a rock or whatever in the ash. So, you know, I mean, it depends on how hardcore you want to get. But like I said, I really do find that that's one of my pieces of kit that I go to pretty often, you know. Backpacks, I picked up this uh, backpack I've been using. I, I did a short, quick review on it right after I got it this last winter. Uh, it's on one of my videos. Really like the pack as far as just all around usefulness. Uh, you know, it's, it's not huge in cubic inches. Uh, the weight is pretty minimal empty you know it does have an external frame but I prefer an external frame over an internal frame I've got several of both just seems like the external frame if I want to uh, you know pull the pack off on this Swedish pack it's relatively easy compared to undoing all the stuff off an Alice just to use the frame I mean this the Swedish pack you know you just a couple of loops couple of straps and boom, boom, it's off, and you've got the bare frame with the straps already attached to it. Uh, no muss, no fuss. A little, little bit more complicated of a procedure with an Alice, with a like a medium Alice or a large Alice with an external frame. Um, not going to say that the frame's any better or any worse. Uh, they do create a bit of a shelf on the Swedish pack that's not quite as big as like the Alice frame shelf that you can add to it but this one's permanent on the Alice or on the Swedish pack 
which I kind of like in a way. It could be maybe a little bit bigger, but it's just something that basically if you're trying to haul something on the frame, it's just something to set the edge of. You know, I could strap a bucket onto it or, you know, whatever I decide I'm going to strap to the frame bare and it'll still catch, you know, that much of whatever I'm putting on the frame. So I like a frame with a shelf. You know, I, I've had some older external frame packs, you know, kind of like the old Kelties and that type of stuff. That type of frame is super comfortable, but it, it's, it's tall. And I know that's how they were designed. I'm not a tall in stature person. Um, I don't need a huge bag for my kit at any given time. If I need that much room, I'll switch over to one of those packs. And about the only time I need something like that would be in the winter if I'm carrying some extra clothing, um, you know, heavier sleep system, that type of stuff. But, you know, I, I just don't, the small compact kit fits nice in a car, in a truck, cab, you know, wherever you want to throw it, it's right there and it's easy to grab. And if you don't load it down where you just keep it at, you know, 25, 30 pounds max, it's real comfortable to carry. You know, I mean, a lot of guys griped about these Swedish packs with the uh, canvas lightly padded shoulder straps that they've got. And, you know, I haven't, I've put some miles on this pack and I haven't had any problems with it, you know, as far as making me ache or you know, it's just, it's, I don't overload the pack. You know, if you, I think it, the, the pack and the frame are small and they're designed to be small so that you don't grossly overload it. Because if you do grossly overload it, and I have done that a couple of times just to see how comfortable it was. And if you get about 40 pounds in it, yeah, it feels like it's going to cut your shoulders off right here. But I don't, you know, I mean, the way that it's designed, I don't want to use it beyond what it's rated for and I don't know what it's rated at I'll be honest with you I don't know what a regular ruck load would be for that but I'm just saying what I'm comfortable with 25 pounds 30 pounds it I could carry that all day long and track most of the day with it and it wouldn't bother me a bit now some guys like waist belts uh, I have a CFP 90 uh, U.S. military pack with a really comfortable padded waist belt, but that pack is so enormous that there again, it's it's a great pack. It's built terribly strong, but it's built terribly large. And the larger the pack you have, the more you tend to carry. I remember the first time I loaded that pack and decided I was going to go out just on like a three mile walk and I had probably close to 50 or 60 pounds in there uh, didn't happen you know I mean I got it on probably got a mile from the truck and turned around I was like there's no way and it carries well but the pack is just too big itself I mean there's no reason for me to have that big of a pack for my kit you know I, I like to travel with just you know a belt knife my shelter, uh, a blanket or two, or a blanket and a bivy. I really like taking like an MSS bivy and just throw a good big queen size wool blanket inside there. That'll get me through until fall, until it starts getting really cold. And sometimes I don't even, I'll just sleep on the bivy and not actually tuck the blanket inside of it because it's just too hot, you know. But, uh, you know, you give me that, and if I got a source for water now, if I got to carry water, that's where I kind of bulk up. Now, I'm trying to figure out a way on this Swedish pack to attach maybe some side pockets to it. I, I've been mulling this over since I bought the pack. I actually have three of them now. And I'm trying to think of just exactly what type of pouches I want to put on the side, but I'm thinking just something big enough to hold like a Nalgene style bottle down each side of it you know with maybe a nesting cup or whatever underneath but you know, I just haven't decided yet but that's you know a lot of the places I go to I like to carry my water in with me to a certain extent but you know how far do you want to trek in with you know eight pounds of water that you don't need you know you trek in with a gallon or two of water that's eight to sixteen pounds of 
extra that you don't need to be carrying. You know, if you can boil your water or filter your water or treat it or however you choose to do it, I choose to boil. But, uh, you know, that's one of those other considerations when you get into a pack like that, you know, you add some extra weight that it's not designed for, how much more do you want to add to it? You know, my kit, like I said, I want to keep under 30 pounds, prefer about 25, doesn't always happen. Depends on tools and stuff like that that I'm carrying throughout the day and what my activities are going to be. You know, if I'm going to be out doing some wood splitting, wood chopping, you know, I'm probably going to be carrying my bigger hand or boy's axe instead of my hand axe. Um, you know, extra pair, well, a pair of gloves, uh, extra socks. I almost always carry just, I don't, they're just something that was drilled into me from the time I was in Boy Scouts, carrying an extra pair of socks. You know, in the summer, you probably don't need to, but you go and kick your feet out in the evening and your feet are going to sweat all day long in the summer, and you can actually get cold from having cold feet. You know, I mean, it's you're probably not going to go into hypothermic shock, but it sure is nice to put on a nice pair of dry socks before you go to sleep, if you sleep in socks, but I do because my feet have a tendency to stay cold. But picked up this Jeff White knife. This is one of them that he uh, advertised on BC USA as uh, kind of like the um, uh, rival to the Mora, I guess you'd say. Um, when I got it, I got it off another individual. It was a little maybe on the uh, tall side out here on the end. I uh, touched it up just a little bit. Haven't really worked it over a lot I can see where there's a lot of room for improvement but just the way the knife feels fits in my hand you know it's not the uh, thickest blade but it's got a little bit of give to it um, I wouldn't even say it's as thick as a Mora but for just an all-around general purpose camp knife I think it's gonna work out great I mean I'm not gonna say that I'm gonna choose that over the Mora every time but you know it just seems like one of those type of knives that it'd, it'd be real useful in a reenactor's kit for one because it is a hand forged carbon steel um, I was doing some fire prep with it earlier you know and using the spine boy it, it uh, makes good shavings you know for your fines um, I haven't tried, uh, you know, striking some flint off of it or anything like that. And I really, I only used it one time on a ferrocium rod, but man, it did just blow sparks with a ferrocium rod. So it's good and sharp, you know, on the back end of it, on the back, on the spine of the knife. But, you know, the, the steel seems to be just as high quality as all of Jeff White's other stuff. So, you know, I'm it, uh, I have another Jeff White knife, and I've showed it to you, and I've been using it pretty much exclusively for the last few months, and I really like it. It's got a lot heavier blade. It's more of a, uh, I guess you'd call it a butcher style. Got a little wider, you know, blade out here. It's not a Nesmuk. It's just, you know, it's it's something that I picked up off a of reenactor, and I call it a frontier butcher knife is what I call it. The blade's basically about the same length as this one but it's just got a lot more heft to it and of course the thickness is there compared to this one but you know I, I wouldn't be afraid to use this to do just about anything around camp now I probably wouldn't stand there I mean I'm sure you could baton it don't get me wrong but I don't think that I'd baton the knife because I'm not all about baton knives but you know it's, it's got three really nice brass pins in the handle um, it's not drilled for a lanyard or anything like that you know but I, I got it with one of the uh, really nice sheaves that uh, Beowulf makes. And uh, he's in conjunction with the Jeff White knife deal with the sheaths. And I really like the sheath. I'm not going to take it off my belt right now and show it to you. But, you know, it, it just, it's a good combination. I, I did a, you know, deal with a guy on it. And I'm going to hone it up a little bit more. But really like the knife really really Jeff White makes some good quality stuff you know I mean and it's economical you know you're not paying 
through the nose for it, you know, I mean, everything he's got is way under 100, and most of it's under 50, I believe, but, you know, you, you add a sheath to it, you know, you're going to add a little bit more to it, but the sheath is spot on quality too, you know. So, you know, just wanted to give you a little review on that knife. I, I haven't heard a lot about him. I know he's advertised him uh, a couple of times, or maybe Beowulf did on BC USA, but they're supposed to be the like Mora, Mora like style knife. Like I said, really like it so far. Turn. I know I'm a Hoosier boy, and Jeff's only just, you know, 35 miles south of me of that. So, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm going to tout on him anyways, but, you know, he, he does make some good quality stuff. I'm really impressed. And, you know, I've seen his stuff on the rendezvous circuit or the rain atmosphere circuit for a while. And uh, once he hit the bushcraft thing, I think he's spot on for that too. You know, I mean, there's other knives out there that I'm sure, you know, more pricey, but, you know, it just depends on what you're asking out of your knife. But I'd recommend this one or the other one that I've got any day of the week. And I've tried, you know, I've got a Mora that I use. I've got an old uh, knife that I've used for Rain Atmets for many, many years, and it's of the same quality as, you know, like a Jeff White knife. It wasn't a Jeff White knife. Was, I've had it longer than I've even knew anything about Jeff White knives, but I'm going to give that, uh, this one I'm carrying right now, a little bit of a tryout. I